Arbor. And we watched uh, Alex's deck in action a little earlier, and it is sweet, Reed. Yeah, just super, super nice is it deck here, complete with uh, all the jumpstart spells that you want to fuel your Murmuring Mystic and your other Spells Matters card. Ral, is it Viceroy, just Hallmark, is it card that you're uh, really excited to have as the top of your curve. And in general, just nice looking limited deck. You can see the mana curve is, is smooth, the mana base is good. Really no complaints about Alex Watts' deck here. Yeah, two copies of the League Guild Mage as well, which we saw do some real work in another round. Here's Ian Barber's deck, Demir. Similarly, a really nice version of his guild. This is a, a great Demir deck featuring Disinformation Campaign, one of the hallmark uncommons, paired with a lot of Surveil. And then if you look at that four slot, Night Vale Predator and Atrata All the right. Silencer, that those, those cards mean business. Yeah, we saw uh, one of the Night Vale Predators hated out of the draft a little bit earlier, but one made its way into Ian Barber's deck. All right, we're going to kick things off in game two here. Ian Barber actually up a game over Alex Watt. Nice to see these blue mirrors. They tend to go long and be remarkably complex and interesting. Uh, both players with counter spells. A disdainful stroke for Alex Watt, a devious cover up for Ian Barber. Those can come in handy in a long, drawn out game. All right, we're going to do a little surveilling early on here. Whisper Agent ending up in the graveyard for Alex Watt. Child of Night for Ian Barber. Nice little two drop. We Dragonauts, though, an excellent is it card there for Alex rewards you for doing exactly the kind of things you want to do, but a Darkblade agent might put the Dragonauts on defense. We'll see. In fact, no, they're going to swing on in, but not pump with an instant or sorcery with the help of a Rubble Bell Boar. Yeah, in fact, the Boar is a better defender against Darkblade agent in particular because if Barber is able to surveil 2-3 Death Touch, will at least trade with the Boar. Holy cow, okay, Maria. Okay, here That's we go. That's a really, really <laughs> sweet sideboard <laughs> card for Ian Barber. That is Drowned Secrets. It's an enchantment, which, first of all, that card type is going to be impossible for an Is It deck to remove from the battlefield. But whenever Ian Barber casts a blue spell, he gets to mill the opponent for two. <laughs> all right. Oh, this is cool. Alternate win condition potentially available here for Ian Barber. I love it. I've been wanting to see this card in action. Wow, and we were so excited about the uh, Drowned Secrets, we missed the other really cool play Barber did on that turn, which is Dazzling Lights on Rumble Belt Boar, which did two things. Oh, it right. It shrunk the boar, saving his Dark Blade Agent in combat, but it also surveilled, which gave the Agent Death Touch. So just a really clean one-mana way to get rid of the boar and surveil for his troubles. Here's a look at Never Happened, and Ian Barber's going to have a look at Alex Watt's hand here, unless Alex says, decides to counter... Boy, really impressed with, with Ian Barber's deck so far and his ability to sideboard and tailor himself for this matchup. That type of looking ahead during the draft and saying, what's my plan when I play against this type of deck? What's my plan when I play against this type of deck? It can really come in big, and uh, Barber just leveraging a huge early game advantage against the opposing blue deck. All right, what are you going to uh, take here, Reed? We've got a Book Devourer, Unexplained Disappearance, and Sonic Assault. I think Book Devourer, the other two cards are their buy time sort of cards, which Barber doesn't mind because he's got the Drowned Secrets um, to ensure he'll win a long game. But uh, basically, if I'm Barber, I'm, uh, I'm taking a look at the way I think the game's going to play out and taking away the card that's most able to help Alex steal a game. And maybe in combination with the Wii Dragonauts, the answer is Sonic Assault. Book Devourer is a little slow, so my, my snap decision was to take the creature, but I, I'm i inclined to believe Ian here with what he picked. Oh, no. All right, Ral off the top. Oh, one turn too late, Ian's too thinking early. That, that's exactly the reason yeah. I thought seized you last <laughs> turn. <laughs> Ral is at Viceroy, hits the table for Alex Watt. So, of course, tremendously powerful card, Maria, but the combination of Rao plus one-ing and Drowned Secrets working on Alex Watt's library, That's he's going to have to be pretty worried about, about this dynamic here. Rao's plus one, you get to look at the top two cards of your library, put one in the hand, one in the graveyard. Minus three deals damage to our creature equal to the number of incident sorcery cards in exile and in your graveyard. 
minus eight. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it deals four damage to any target. You draw two cards with its emblem. I think Barber maybe just sent the Dark Blade Agent as a bluff attack. Mm. But Alex Watt decided to take it, fearing either an instant speedway to surveil or maybe a post combat dead weight. All right, so we're going to pass the turn back over to Alex. Raul currently at four. And it's funny, too. Drown Secrets is such a crazy card, especially in this format with Jumpstart. Yeah, a bit of a double-edged sword. You make a good point. You don't want to... You don't want to mill your opponent a little bit and just give them more action in their graveyard, but if you can mill your opponent a lot and if the game is going in a certain way, that's a card that can almost single-handedly win. Yeah, and there is a radical idea in the yard now off of a mill there. And there's Book Devourer. Alex Watt keeping a couple cards face up that Ian knows about in his hand. When I was down filming this draft earlier, Ian looked up at me and said, I think I played you yesterday online. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, did you win? He's like, yeah, I did. <laughs> Kawhi is a duplicate at the front of Ian Barber's hand. I see a deadly visit shuffled around in there. Certainly representing Artful Takedown here, but I, I don't know that he has it. I think maybe it's just going to be a Dark Blade or, um, Whisper, Whisper agent. agent. Yeah, precisely. But yeah, this game has spiraled out of control. It was looking so good for Barber from the point where he was resolving the, the oh, yeah. never happened, but then Ral off the top um, combined with Alex Watt finding a few more useful cards and, you know, in fact, the Drowned Secrets has so far helped Alex Watt. It's a big threat, but in the meantime, it's filled the graveyard for the purposes of Rao's minus three ability. It's dumped a radical idea in there. Yeah, and we're just going to plus Rao again here to take another peek at the top, find something we like. So I think Alex attacked and declined to use Book Devourer's optional ability of okay. cycling your hand. That makes a lot of sense if you're worried about the size of your library. <coughs> Alex right now has three different piles of <laughs> hand. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, or excuse me, League Guild Mage here for Watt. And there's the flashed in Whisper Agent with the Surveil. So Barber really trying to set up a situation where he can kill the Is It Viceroy. All right, must have been a land on top. Boom. Swamp and land number five unlocks deadly visit. If he indeed wants to pay a visit to that guild mage, he does still know about unexplained disappearance in the hand of Alex Watt. That's true. But at least if you make him use it, reset your whisper agent, that's not so bad. Got to be careful with his own life total because the Wee Dragonauts combined with Radical Idea, maybe even just one more instant or sorcery, can get him very close to dead. Child of Night. And there's Dark Blade Agent for Ian Barber. Triggering the mill. Ian's at 10. Alex Watts still sitting at his original life starting life total of 20. So, can the Book Devourer get through? How many instants can be played to trigger the Wee Dragonauts? It's a big turn for Alex. He does, he, each turn that yeah. passes threatens the size of his library so much that I would be really looking for oppor opportunities to uh, unload damage. There's Radical Idea getting jump-started here, discounting a mountain. Draw a card, trigger the Dragonauts. can see him uh, lining up attacks here. Here's the Book Devourer. In come the Dragonauts along with it. 
It's going to be a triple block on the Book Devourer. Oh, just a double block. Just a double block. Hypothesis a low is going to pump the Dragonauts yet again and potentially punish Ian here. Wow. Discard a Murmuring Mystic. No big deal. Down go both of Ian's creatures in combat. Dragonauts in for a huge chunk of damage. Barber falls to three life. <laughs> and Alex Watt passes the turn without using without using Rao, which I think that's a great play. That was a really nice turn. Yeah. He forced through seven damage. Uh, maintains a commanding position on the board, and the question is just, can Ian Barber deplete his library before he dies to these creatures? All right, so we do know about the Deadly Visit in Barber's hand. We also have a Child of Night to gain a couple of life if he uh, wants to on the table. Night Veil Predator here for Barber will force another mill from Alex Watt. And Beacon Bolt <laughs> is one of the cards that gets milled. We did see Alex Watt making great use of League Guild Mage's copy ability. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Matches. Alex Watt is going to tie things up here in game number two. The Is It League taking that one down versus Demir. Here we go, game number three. Alex has the possibility of 3 0ing this pod here if he's able to take this win from Ian Barber. Thought Erasure is the play. And once again, one of these Thought Seize effects potentially out of the sideboard from Ian Barber. Piston Fist Cyclops is going to be what he grabs, leaving the Murmuring Mystic. But now he knows about that, that Disdainful Stroke, which is always uh, pretty important. Fourth land, say go. Back over to Alex who tries to play that Murmuring Mystic. And right into Devious Cover-Up from Ian Barber. Which is a great clue as to why he didn't take it from his opening hand. Shuffles back in. Thought Erasure. And there you go. All right, Drown Secrets. Let's see if you can get it done this time. Just two cards left for Ian Barber, though, at this point. No play there from Watt. Radical idea in hand. I did spy. Yeah, the Drown Secrets coming down early just puts really puts the screws to Alex Watt. Um, he was able to do it in game number two, but it demands the, uh, the question of can you win the game quickly? Because if you cannot, Drown Secrets will, will just mill you out over the course of nine or ten turns it's it's inev inevitable whisper agent able to get in for three knocking barber down to 17 discovery here from alex watt surveil two draw one excellent in a position like this especially when ian barber i know at least one of those two cards is land in his hand All right, back over to Ian. Swamp was the draw. Boy, Drown Secret's looking really bad if yeah. it's uh, one of your few spells that you have access to. It's great in the context of a good draw, but if you can't get the wheels turning, if you can't get the surveil, surveilling into other uh, other card drawing spells, then it, uh, I mean it's just a do-nothing enchantment, which that happens sometimes. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind if you're considering putting it in your deck. I give Ian Barber tons of credit for drafting this card and bringing it in the matchup. Um, unfortunately, it looks like it's not going to wind up winning in the game in either of these two sideboarded um, battles. But still, I think uh, good to look out for cards like that. Niche cards that can be good in particular matchups. 
Yeah, some pretty bad draws here the last few turns for Ian Barber. Just a lot of lands, and Alex Watts' deck is, you know, well set up to, uh, to take advantage of um, an opponent who's not drawing very well. With a lot of access to jump start and card draw. By the way, Ian Barber came into the day at 8-1, and one, so he's also 2-0 in the pod. Oh, okay. So even losing this, a great finish for him. He'll go into the second draft at 10-2 and two in striking distance of top 8. But Alex Watt, if he's able to close this one out, will be our last undefeated player at 12-0. Awesome. There's a Dark Blade agent for Barber. And a Quasi duplicate. All right, let's mill. League Guild Mage and a Mountain. So tough, though, because you, you almost can't cast the Quasi-Duplicate. I mean, he'll have to, but the, uh, the Unexplained Disappearance could respond to finish him off. I, I, either one of these spells, yeah. though, Sonic Assault will do the job just as well. Yep, and there's the Handshake. Alex Watt, now the lone undefeated player in the building. For Grand Prix, Montreal advances to 12 and 0, heading into the second draft of today. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> Great job to Alex Watt. He he just had a beautiful looking draft deck. Seemed to find the open guild, capitalize on a couple good opens, and uh, he's 12 0. So that's nice. that that means potentially one win away from the top eight. He's in great position, and a lot of the other players that we watched. Good job to them as well. Two and one in a really tough draft pod. Still in striking distance, but they're going to do need to do a bit more work in the second draft. All right. Well, let's watch some more people draft. What do you say? Don't Sounds go anywhere. Good to me.